In our second reading today from 2 Corinthians, we hear that God has reconciled us to himself through Christ and given to us the ministry of reconciliation. Namely, God was reconciling the world to himself in Christ, not counting their sins, their trespasses against them, but entrusting to us the ministry of reconciliation. So we are ambassadors for Christ, as if God was appealing through us. So we're not only reconciled to God, but we're given the call to bring reconciliation into the world. What God has done for us in Jesus Christ, we're called to do for others, so that the world might be reconciled to God and to one another. Sometimes, of course, we're not even reconciled to ourselves, particularly if we find it hard to let God forgive us. Sometimes we think we have to earn God's forgiveness. When we expect this of ourselves, we then expect it of others too, demand it of others. So the question becomes, you know, do we really, is forgiveness all about something we have to earn? Do we hold others for downs? Are we able to accept God's forgiveness? And are we able to forgive others? Now, as Isaiah, and not in today's reading, but in, in his writings, he says it so well, and Job illustrates it, that God's ways are not our ways. And that's really what Jesus is telling us in what is sometimes called the parable of the prodigal father. I mean, we often hear it as the prodigal son, and certainly the way he wastes his inheritance in a life of dissipation shows the foolish prodigality of his lifestyle. I mean, that's certainly true. But I want to suggest, as some scholars have, that the father's forgiveness is even more prodigal than anything that young son has done. It's not just that the younger son has wasted part of his inheritance that his father has worked for years to build up, but the father is even forgiveness on the part of the father for the deep insult of basically telling his father, it's too bad you're not already dead. And then I'd get the inheritance. I can't wait for that, so give it to me now. The father's love is so prodigal, so over the top, if you want, that he holds none of this against his son. But he's overjoyed that the young man has finally come to his senses and come home. So the son comes home to an overpowering pouring out of forgiving love. The father doesn't count the son's sins against him, but as a young man confesses his sin, he's overwhelmed with loving forgiveness. And of course, as happens in a number of Jesus' parables, the question is, will the son learn from his father's love. And of course, then there's the older brother who's really angry that his father receives his wasteful brother with, thanks, with forgiveness and then throws a party for him. What about me? All these years I've served you, not once did I disobey your orders. Yet you never gave me even a kid goat to feast on with my friends. But your son 
returns who swallowed up your property with prostitutes, and for him you slaughter the fattened calf. <laughs> Isn't that wonderful, you know? When he does something wrong, it's your son. It's not my brother, it's your son. <laughs> do, do husband and wives ever do that to one another? You know, it's your. Anyway, clearly the older brother thinks in a strict justice way. I obeyed you. I did everything right. I'm the one who deserves the reward. Why are you doing this for him? The father responds, My son, you are here with me always. All that I have is yours. Okay, at that point, you know, the whatever's left, uh, half the inheritance and everything that grows from now on is going to be that older son's. But now, we must celebrate and rejoice because your brother was dead, was dead to us. And he's come to life again. He was lost in that foolishness of that dissipated life. And now, He's alive to us. He's been found again. You know, it's that thing, this older brother, because he's so, you know, justice-oriented, he doesn't realize that his father loves him. And not just because he keeps his nose clean that he could have asked for that kid goat any time to have a party with his friends, but he never did. Because it was too, he never allowed the father's love to touch him. He was too busy being good. And even though he undoubtedly knew a lot about farming, he never learned to love and accept love. And you know, don't we see this sometimes in families where someone got caught up in, particularly in drug or alcohol abuse, and later they turn around? And often, not always, but often can be welcomed back, which is a wonderful thing. And will the older brother realized not just that he is loved but that love entails forgiveness even prodigal forgiveness when a person comes to their senses and comes home God is home God is home the father our father as we pray is the merciful one whose heart longs always for our return and the return of all. He desires that we might, as we sang, taste and see the goodness of the Lord. He longs for us to be a new creation in Christ, a people of reconciliation, something which happened to a great extent in South Africa and in Rwanda. It happened in the 1950s when the German Catholic bishops went to Poland to ask the Polish people and their bishops to forgive them for the Nazi atrocities. In the lead up to the Jubilee year of 2000, Pope John Paul II asked forgiveness on some around 24 different occasions for the sins of the church over those 2,000 years, nearly 2,000 years before. He asked for forgiveness for the, the religious wars there in around the uh, time of the Renaissance in Europe, for forgiveness for the schism with the Eastern churches, for the oppression of women, for the lag in condemning slavery, for the cruelty of the Inquisition, for the excesses of colonialism 
and other actions and omissions. And I know families who reconciled before a parent or a sibling died, before the opportunity for reconciliation had passed. So we're all called to a ministry of reconciliation. So let us pray. God, loving Father, help us to bring ourselves with our sins and weaknesses, with our commissions and omissions before you to receive your loving forgiveness. This Lent, may we take advantage of the Sacrament of Reconciliation that we might taste your mercy and grow to walk in the way of Jesus. Help us to be reconcilers in our families, in our communities, in our nation, and in our world. Give us your heart for all our brothers and sisters. We ask this of you, Father, through Jesus Christ, our Lord and brother, and in the power of the Holy Spirit.